If you work with a lot of email and you're sick of switching tabs between index search and email over and over again, then episode three is for you. We're going to cover customizing your interface to make the most efficient use of index search and the email tab. Welcome to Feature Focus. Welcome to the video. I'm Justin Tolman. I'm the director of training over North America for Access Data, which is an Xtero company. Again, new name, but same software. So we're going to get into it. And in this episode, we're going to talk about searching your email with the index search, minimizing the need to switch tabs through interface customization. And we got to throw some respect out to the developers responsible for interface design. They've got to design an interface that does the most good for the most amount of people. But a lot of times for you, for me, that interface isn't exactly what we want. And so that's the great thing about FTK is just about everything within the interface can be customized to suit your needs. We're talking tabs, columns, tab filters, what elements on a tab even appear. You can remove, add, rearrange, all that sort of stuff. And that can help you be more efficient in your examinations. So what we're on right now is the index search tab. So the index search tab is designed to show search results following a search. And this makes sense. Let's run a search for the word Sumter. Click add. We can see that we have 86 hits. Okay, that's the number of hits. So we're going to run search now. We'll include all files just to show the example here. Expand out our results into email and we can see we've got four hits in four files. If we expanded this out, we can see some of the context there. Within our file list pane, we see the four emails here listed by icon. We have one that's deleted and we can see various things about it. Notice the column set is set to normal, shows us basic file information, gets us there, right? Remember, we're, we're doing the most good for the most people on a search. We don't know what they're searching for. At this point, we only had a few hits, so it's not too bad to see, but you could imagine if you had a lot of hits, these hits could be buried within a bunch of files, but and you're only interested in the email. You need to right click on it, view the item in a different list, and we'll go down to email, and that's gonna shoot us over to the email tab. And now we have what we expect from the email tab. We have the uh, email, we have the family, we have any associated attachments, all that sort of stuff. Great. This may not be a huge issue if you're only looking for a few things or you're jumping tabs a lot anyway, if you're not just focused on one artifact. But for this example, which has come up in class a couple times in the last few weeks, and also in conversations with various users, they don't want to do all that jumping. And I get that. So what we can do is while we're on the index search tab, we'll go up to view tab layout, and we're going to add a new tab layout. So it's going to give us a little create tab. We'll call this email search. Okay. And we'll click. Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to create another tab based on the tab that we were on. So if you wanted to duplicate another tab, just be on that tab and, and add a new layout. Now we have the ability to modify this for email. We named it email search. Let's add a few things in here. So we're going to go up to view and we're going to turn on email attachments and it'll just put it somewhere. Okay. So we'll bring that down and we'll anchor it here and we'll readjust it just a little bit. And then we're going to go up to view and bring in email conversation because we want to see the families that belong to those emails that we get our hits. We'll bring it over here as well. Now that's great. We have uh, an interface that is starting to match, but we can take a few extra steps here. So we can take this drop down for our columns because remember we're looking for email and we can select email as our column set. And notice now we have the from, the to, subject, and because we've added a couple things in here and we could also resize, okay, to get a bit more screen real estate if we wanted, uh, we have our relevant email columns. Cool. So now when we come in to uh, our hits and we select one, 
we have our four emails, yes, but now we can see that it's part of an email chain. We can see the attachments that are associated with it and here the screenshot, okay? So we get more of an idea of what we're looking for. If you wanna restrict your search results to just email-based items, there's two main ways to do that. Create a global filter, which will restrict it down to email items, or when you go to run the search, you can activate the filter there and only run it on your search results. Either way, we'll return the same results. So in this case, we'll activate a filter, we'll come down and we'll select email items only. Notice it filters our results here. But if I go up and I run a search for guns within four words of box and click add, notice I have two hits there and I'm gonna go ahead and search now. If you were to apply the filter here, it would also do the same thing. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna hit all files because we have it up in, in global here and we'll expand our results. We hit on a graphic and we select that. And what we get is the OCR, the optical character recognition of a graphic that was sent in an attachment. Okay, so we can still view the natural view. It's that screenshot. Okay, in this case, we OCR'd our evidence so that the index would pick it up. It is an email item because it is an attachment to an email. We still see the family thread here. We get our attachment, our OCR text hit, and we can see that. Now, you can right click and go and view in the other list. Okay, notice we can jump over to email now. If you wanna take more action here, jump around, filter by dates, those types of things, okay? Or from our email search, if you select any email from within the family, okay, it'll jump you back over to the email tab again to give you the context of everything that you want there. So using a custom tab and adding in the features that you want, including column sets, which you can customize those column sets as well, uh, custom panes, rearranging things a little bit. You can get more out of your interface without having to move around. See that information and you still have all access to filters, bookmarks, labels, whatever you're gonna use. So customize your interface that suits your needs and things will be a lot easier. <laughs> In last week's video, we talked about the system summary and various ways to report information out of that. One question that came up frequently was, will registry viewer continue to be supported? And the answer is yes. Even though the system summary pulls a lot of information from the registry viewer, there's still that need for the investigator to be able to go into the registry, view the raw code and validate the, their findings if they need to testify on it, report on it, etc. So registry viewer is still being supported. There will be more features in the future, more support and registry viewer isn't going anywhere. Going back to our first video where we talked about FTK Imager, Christopher asked, can you add an extension list into the wildcard search? And the answer with FTK Imager is no. You will need to manually put in each extension every time, okay? So a new line for each extension is just the way it is with FTK Imager. In FTK, you can do that automatically through a filter system, which you can save and automatically create custom images. Obviously, I feel that training is pretty important so that you guys get the most out of your forensic examinations. So included right here is a code for our Forensic Toolkit Basic Learning Pass for 25% off. The first 10 people to use the code on our website, training.accessdata.com, will get that 25% off. So sign up for that. Come take some classes. Learn about FTK Imager, Registry Viewer, Password Recovery Toolkit, and of course, Forensic Toolkit in that learning pass across a couple days of training. So we'll see you there. Thanks.